On today's DAS tutorial, I'm going to be starting a new series on using photography principles in DAS Studio. So be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already while we get ready to dive into some different compositional techniques. Um, the first one that I'm going to do today is one of the first uh, one of the first compositional techniques that I learned when I was uh, studying photography, and the first one that most people learn, uh, which is called the rule of thirds, or some people call it the two thirds rule. Um, all right, and basically the idea is that you want the uh, subject or subjects of your photograph to be on the outer third of the um, um, of the of the frame, um, and you want the rest of it like more or less blank space to cover up two thirds. There are a couple of different ways that you can implement this, and before we get too deep into this, um, I do want to say that rules when it comes to art are meant to be broken. So this isn't a rule that you're going to follow 100% of the time. For instance, most of the work that I do in Daz is for visual novels, uh, and in those I like everything to be centered, and then I can manipulate it around the screen from within the game engine. Um, so this is just for doing like art photography or promo photography. This is just one compositional technique that you can use. We'll go through other ones in future videos, but this is the one we're going to do for now. So like I said, this isn't a rule that you need to follow 100% of the time. It's just kind of an extra thing that you can put in your toolbox. So the first thing that we have to be able to do is we have to be able to tell exactly where the outer uh, thirds of our photograph is or of our framing area. Um, and there's an easy way we can do that. If you've ever shot uh, with a, a DSLR camera or, or a uh, 35 millimeter film camera before, uh, you're probably used to seeing the, um, the thirds overlay. And we can add that in DAS by clicking on this uh, icon up here. And um, we have an option that says show thirds guide. So if we click that, then it does this overlay um, showing us where all the thirds are. Uh, so um, this overlay is going to be invisible in our uh, finished render. This is just as a guide while we're, uh, while we're setting up our scene. Um, so right now I've got our um, character in the center of the screen, which seems logical. Like you would think that you would want your subject front and center, however, that uh, uh, can be kind of counterintuitive. It can actually make your photo feel off balance when you have your uh, subject centered, which is why it sometimes look be looks better to have it on the outside thirds. So I can fix this really quickly. Actually, let's go ahead and go into IRA view and I'll show you what this looks like. Um, I've already got my model, of course, uh, set and dressed and everything, and I'm just using an HDRI dome. Uh, the lighting is not great, but uh, we're just using this just, like I said, for the compositional techniques, so I don't really care about the lighting too much right now. So on this one, I'm going to try placing her on this uh, left third. There we go. And the exact placement is going to be up to you um, as the photographer or as the artist. Um, Depending on the photograph, you might want her just inside or just outside. I usually like to put this uh, node right here where these two cross like right at the middle of the subject's face or a little bit down. Um, and again, just experiment with it, find out whatever you like best and show your work to other people and see which ones they like best as well. All right, let's go ahead and check that in an eye review. There we go, and that uh, again looks a lot more balanced. Um, so we have some interesting things over here, but our uh, uh, main attention is still drawn to our figure there on the left. She's obviously the uh, the focus. And I've got another couple of images that I was messing with later. I'll go ahead and show you those real quick. Um, for two of them, I actually forgot to save them as Daz scenes. So we're just going to look at the final photograph, and I'm just going to try to explain to you what I was doing with the uh, with the thirds guide. So let me go ahead and load up my uh, second scene. All right, so I've done a couple of different things on this one. This is just a landscape scene with my barn as the primary subject. Um, so I have my um, right third going straight through pretty much the middle of the barn. And something else that I've done here is really common in, in landscape photography is I have my bottom third going right about at the horizon. Uh, which again is just going to balance this nicely and then I've got my tree over here in the left third a little bit outside of the guidelines but still kind of in that left third um, and again you could mess around with the placement on this a little bit for instance you could zoom out a touch and move it a little bit to the left in order to balance it a little bit more so if I do that my tree is going to be closer to the left third 
and my barn is a little closer to the right third. This is actually how I set this up originally. Um, the reason that I ended up not going with this one is because I'm using an HDRI dome again, and that ground is kind of cut off on the left, so it looks very, very strange. So I just went on ahead and left that a little bit more, a little bit more centered. Um, I don't really like that tree there. I'm actually probably would uh, delete that. There we go. But if I rendered it with that tree, that would be pretty easy to uh, to edit out in Photoshop. But again, so yeah, my barn right there on the right third, and then my bottom third line going right through the horizon there. All right, and on my next couple, oh, let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. I had a little bit of the uh, edge of the ground at the bottom there. There we go. That's about perfect. All right, so on my next two, I didn't save these as death scenes, I forgot to, so I'm just gonna pull up the um, finished renders and we'll check those out. All right, so here's the first one that I did. So I've got my model on the left there. This is my subject. And on this one, I had the guidelines right on her, the tip of her nose. So right in the middle of the face is where those uh, two lines met. And then all this negative space over here, again, which balances the, uh, balances the photograph out. All right, this one is the bar scene, uh, the uh, barn scene, I'm sorry, so you can see it without the guidelines. And again, compositionally, I'm pretty happy with this one. I rendered this one before I deleted that tree. So again, I would probably Photoshop that out, which that's against a neutral background, so that would be pretty easy to do if I wanted to do that. But again, compositionally, nice and even, very balanced. You got this negative space up here, um, which is created by, of course, putting their horizon on that bottom third. All right, and the final one, is this one. This one I really like a lot. Um, one thing I like to do is whenever I'm doing like kind of a moody character scene is I like them facing into the negative space. So on this one I put the right third about right here uh, is where that uh, point is, the top right uh, third uh, intersection. Um, and then I have the horizon again at the top third this time. I had it on the bottom third line in the uh, barn scene and that one is on the top third. So lots of negative space here. And, um, and again, she's looking into the negative space which makes it feel more balanced. If she were facing the other direction, that would look very, very strange. Um, so if I were uh, if I were facing the other way, I would put her on the left third if she were facing to the right. So you generally wanna have them facing towards the negative space. All right, that'll about do us for this video. This is a quick one. This is a pretty simple rule to grasp. Um, there is a little bit more to it. Uh, if you do a quick search online, you can find some more advanced ways to use the rule of thirds, but that's pretty much the basics of it. And like anything, uh, the best thing to do is just experiment, try different things, see what you can come up with. And of course, rules in art are meant to be broken. So don't follow this 100% of the time. Just use this as a technique uh, that you might wanna use sometimes. All right, so if you got something out of this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. I've got more great content and DAS tutorials coming up very, very soon, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.